Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah ma ba'd. The question is asking here about the qunut. Does he raise his hands during the qunut or not? Uh, and he is saying that this is the view of Sheikh Muqbil that you do not raise your hands during the qunut. You just leave them to the side or you, you know, if you're of the view that you keep them folded um, as you would do in the normal qiyam position after the ruku. So some of the ulama have said that. So what is the correct view in this? Now, first and foremost, are we supposed to do the qunut outside of Ramadan? This is a separate issue, but this is an issue that's been discussed by the ulama. Now, the majority of the ulama from the four madhabs, the Hanafis, and the Shafi'i and the Hanabila and some of the Malikiyah, they have said that the Ramadan, sorry, um, Qunut has been prescribed in Ramadan and outside of Ramadan also. And this is also the view of Umar and Ali ibn Masood and Anas bin Malik, Hassan Basri, Ata and Nakhai and many from the ulama from the Salaf. Imam Malik said it has not been legislated that a person does Qunut outside of Ramadan. And this is also the view of Abu Huraira and Ibn Umar and others from the ulama from the Salaf. And they have said, as part of uh, their evidence, is that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught al Hassan bin Ali how to make the Qunut. But he himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, has not been prescribed that he used to do it outside of Ramadan. This is the view of those people who say that there is no Qunut outside of Ramadan. However, the counter-argument to this is, the very fact that he told al Hassan to do it, uh, Ibn Ali, to do it, is proof in itself that you should be doing it on a regular basis. Added to the fact that some of the names that we've just mentioned before, Omar and others, used to do it, Ali radiallahu anhu, used to do it, Ibn, Ibn Mas'ud, used to do it on a regular basis, radiallahu anhu, ajain. So what seems to be the correct view is that it is prescribed even outside of Ramadan. Some of them have even said that even inside of Ramadan, it's not prescribed for the whole of Ramadan. They have said it's only prescribed after halfway of Ramadan. Uh, and this is because Umar Adiran used to command Ubay bin Ka'b to perform the Qunut in the last half of Ramadan. Uh, and this is the view of Hassan and others. So now, this is uh, something which has been mentioned by the time of the Salaf, at the time of the Salaf. And this is a legitimate Khilaf. What seems to be the correct view is that the Qunut is to be recited throughout the year. Now, we have mentioned this before in a separate audio. What you recite in the Qunut, there are certain things that the Messenger of Allah has encouraged. But whatever you can recite as a dua, inshallah, it is sufficient. This is because the companions used to have different qunut that they used to do. And even if a person leaves out completely, there is no harm in that. Uh, because of the fact that, like we have just said, that some of the have said that it's not even registered in the first place. Although it is, and that's the correct opinion. Right. Do you raise your hands when you're doing the qunut now? Now, the majority of the ulama from the different madahib have said that you should raise your hands. Some of them have said that you don't raise your hands. And this is the view of the Maliki. They have said there is no evidence for it. Just like there is no evidence that the Messenger of Allah used to do it habitually, there is no evidence that he used to raise his hands uh, during the Qunut. Some of them have said that you only raise your hands in making takbir and then you let them down again. And this is the view of the Hanafis. And they have said that this is narrated to us from Ibn Masood. This is what he used to do. So this is our opinion. But like I have said, there's a, a party from the Hanafis themselves, the Shafis, the Hanabila, and a party even from the Maliki as well, some of them. And Ibn Masood, Abu Huraira, Ibn Abbas, and many from the companions have said you should raise your hands in Qunut. What's the evidence for this? The Messenger of Allah وسلم, used to perform the Qunut for the Nawazil. You know, things that used to occur against the Muslim Ummah, the Messenger of Allah used to perform Qunut in the obligatory prayer. This is a type of a Qunut, even though it's not the same Qunut that you do in the Witr. And it's been Malik said that the Messenger of Allah performed Qunut for a month against the Quraysh. And in that he used to raise his hands. There's also another hadith that the Messenger of Allah used to raise his hands in istisqa, making dua uh, as part of, you know, the, the khutbah in the uh, in the khutbah asking Allah for rain So what they have said is Not, not only did the Messenger of Allah Do it for the purpose of Qunut But if there is a reason For you to raise your hands In this manner In the Salat When you are making dua in this manner Then it has been legislated And this for me seems to be The more correct view How does a person raise his hands Now you might find some people Raising their hands to the sky And you might find some people Raising their hands wide far apart 
the sifa and the characteristic and the attribute that you should have when you're raising your hands is you stand with humility in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you put your hands close together at the chest. And you open them up as a servant who is asking from his master. This now, inshallah, hopefully completes the rulings on the qunut, whether a person should be doing it. And whether a person should be raising his hands, and if he is, how to raise his hands. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us of those people who are steadfast upon the salat. Likewise, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us of those people who, when they supplicate to him, that he responds. Allahu a'lam. Sallallahu alayhi wa